So how do we resolve and move beyond our negative emotions? Is it even possible? Can we go from problematic feelings to much more empowering and positive ones? Well, in my opinion, we absolutely can. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. Hi, I'm Stephen Burns from Solutions in Mind, and in this video I'd like to share with you a crucial distinction that can help you resolve and move beyond your negative emotions. One point I want to make before I share this though, is that we all have to experience negative emotions at some stage of our life, unfortunately. If you hear someone telling you that you can entirely conquer your emotional state, that you can eliminate all negativity and bad feelings from your life, then I would suggest that that person is lying. There's a good chance they're trying to sell you a book or some kind of seminar. We all have to experience negative emotions. In fact, it's a natural way that we learn and progress as a human being. However, what I'd like to share with you is a little tip, a little technique that you can use so that you don't have to stay in the negative emotions for too long, that you learn what needs to be learned so that you can let them go and then move forward as a person. So the tip involves something called dissociation. Now, by the way, there are lots of ways to deal with negative emotions and it is a complex subject, but this is a really useful starting point. So just to share with you this distinction, whenever we think about something, usually if we're thinking about a memory, say it's something bad that happened to us in the past, we can think about it in two different ways. We can do it in a way where we are fully associated in the memory. So we're seeing through our own eyes, hearing through our own ears, and feeling the feelings pretty strongly. So it's almost like we are reliving the experience. But we can also look on as if it's happening to someone else. So this is almost like where we have stepped out of the memory and we're looking back on it from an observer's perspective. It's kind of like if someone was to have filmed the entire experience and you then watch the video back, what would you actually see? So this first distinction where you're in the movie or in the memory is what we call associated. But when we're looking at ourselves as if it's happening to someone else, that's what we call dissociated. And dissociation is really powerful, it's massively useful for two main reasons. The first is it allows us to lessen the intensity of that experience. It's almost like nature's way of healing, of allowing us to just get some distance, to get a bit of a break from the intensity of something that's happened to us. Because when we see ourselves, when we walk far, far away from that experience, then all of a sudden the emotional intensity starts to lessen because it's kind of like it's happening to someone else. We're giving ourselves some distance. You can try this right now. Don't pick some kind of traumatic memory. So no time when mummy took the spoon away when I was five and I've never been the same since. Nothing like that. Just pick a memory that's troublesome, something that has bad feelings attached to it. And then try almost like walking away from yourself, pushing the memory off into the distance, and then look on as if it's happening to someone else. Usually when you do this, then the emotional intensity really starts to drop. The feelings, the intensity is nowhere near as strong as what it is when you're actually in the movie. So that's the first reason. The second reason, in my opinion, is possibly the most important of the two. And that is that dissociation allows you to relearn what needed to be learned back in that experience. Now that sounds like a bit of a mouthful, so let me explain. Usually when we have a bad experience, we are caught up in the drama. We are caught up in the intensity. So it actually makes us a little bit dumb. It makes us a little bit stupid. Usually we tend to just grab on to something just to get ourselves through the experience. And we often make a mistake. We make wild generalizations about life and we place these limiting ideas on ourselves. One example would be a phobia. Uh, say for example, someone was in the school playground and the school bully put a spider down the back of their neck and they were so traumatized by it that they decided that all spiders are basically evil, that they are under threat even in the presence of an image of a spider. That would be a massive generalization. Unless of course you lived in Australia, and then that's a good time to have a spider phobia. But it's where the emotional intensity has caused the person to buy into some kind of limiting idea. It's made them temporarily dumb or stupid. 
and this idea has just stayed solid and fixed over time. So actually by going back to these memories and seeing them from a dissociated perspective, then it allows us to look on and go, hmm, interesting. Because the intensity has been lessened, we can actually look on and learn what really we should have learned back then. We can update what we had actually drawn from that particular experience. And usually when we see it for what it really is, and we relearn something more useful, then that's when we get an even bigger release. And for me, that's one of the key powerful and useful parts of doing dissociation. So that's dissociation, a really useful way when it comes to resolving and moving beyond our negative emotions. Now just so that you know, this is only one small aspect of a much larger program called the NLP Personal Transformation Video Course. In that eight hour program, I'll be showing you how you can use all kinds of NLP and hypnosis techniques to transform from the inside out. So if you wanna check out full details of that program, you'll find it on the Solutions in Mind website. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.